Hi everyone, this lecture is all about the nervous system and neurons. We're gonna, going to look at the neurons on an individual level and then look at how they fire. So there's one, and you've created a bead neuron. You've labeled the parts of a neuron. Let's talk about how it actually fires. So over here we have the dendrites and they're receiving messages from another neuron. Um, and when that message gets to a dendrite, the message then goes to the cell body, information goes to the nucleus, and then that message is fired through the axon into the axon terminals. And that message would go to another neuron across the synapse. So here we have a better picture of how a neuron fires. So I'm going to break it down for you piece by piece and I've got some little memory tricks in here to help you remember. So let's start with the dendrites. Um, well, dendrites kind of sounds like kites. Um, so you can think about like the branches um, that come out of the soma and receive signals from other neurons and muscles. This kind of rhymes with kites. So we've got a picture of some kites hanging on the branches of dendrites. I don't know guys, I'm doing my best here. Um, so these are the branches that receive signals from other neurons and muscles and then that the synapse is the connection. Um, we have an axon terminal here on one end of a neuron and then we have um, the dendrite receiving the signal across the synapse. And a way to remember synapse, you can think of there's the word naps inside of synapse. So the space between two neurons, you can take a nap there. It's a very, very tiny space. Um, but there's a... Now let's back up here. So we have our cell body. And this is where the nucleus, like the brain of a cell is. And this is what tells the cell to fire or not to fire. Now let's talk about the axon. So the axon is a wire-like structure and it extends from the soma to the axon terminals, the axon terminal buttons. And you can see it, you can think of it like a highway uh, where the messages will travel down the neuron. Now what's really important here is the myelin sheath. Um, this myelin sheath covers the axon. This is like a fatty coating. Um, and the thicker the myelin sheath, the, the, the thicker the coating actually speeds up um, neurotransmission. It, it helps speed up that neural imp impulse. Now these axon terminals, these are what contain the neurotransmitters. And they send the neurotransmitters shooting across the synapse. And when those neurotransmitters shoot across, some don't um, connect to the dendrite. Some don't get sucked up. So they actually um, bring back those neurotransmitters. So how does a neuron fire? You have to think of it like a gun. Um, at the beginning, you would have a what's called the rusting potential. There is a slightly negative charge in that neuron. And at some point, um, there, there is a threshold and that negative charge changes and enough neurotransmitters reach the dendrites and then you go into what is action potential and action potential is this all or none response um, if you think about if you've ever held a gun before and shot a gun or just imagine um, it doesn't matter how hard you pull that trigger it's going to shoot whether you pull it lightly or very very hard it's the the bullet will have the same speed and that is how neurons fire Another example, yes, I just made you watch a toilet flush. It's a perfect example of how a neuron fires. You, you pull down the flusher and the toilet flushes. It's an all or none response. So neuron communication, we go from the resting potential where the majority of the ions inside of the neuron are negatively charged and the majority of the ions outside of the neuron are positively charged. So here's inside of the neuron, negative charge, mostly positive charge on the outside. And I'm, I have another um, mnemonic device here for you to remember. And then you can think neg in, negative in, like necking. These guys are necking inside. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, that is other people in the office laughing right now. Okay, and then we have pause out, like passed out. This guy is so um, grossed out. He's like passed out outside. Pause out. And then we have the action potential where everything changes. So when... So these axons have gates, 
When the first gate opens, the positively charged ions flood through this channel and that causes the next gate to open and the next gate to open. So this is how everything switches. So all the positive ions flood through the axon and the negative ions kind of get pushed out. Now all of this happens um, somewhere between like a hundred or even a thousand times a second. Some neurons only travel about two miles per hour um, when they're traveling across the neural fiber, um, but some travel as fast as 200 or more miles per hour. But if you think about it, we had that discussion about how humans and computers are different. Um, this is actually three million times slower than that of just electricity through a wire. So if the brain actually processes, processes information much slower than many, many computers. We measure brain activity in milliseconds, so thousandths of a second, but we measure computer activity in nanoseconds, and that's billionths of a second. And that's why, um, when, if you think about just your physical reactions to things, sometimes um, it takes you a quarter second or longer. If you think about, like, uh, if you're driving and a child darts in front of your car and you, you have this split second reaction, you have to slam on your brakes, but it always feels like, oh, life, things are going in slow motion. You don't react as quickly as you wish you could. Um, and that really is because though the brain um, is processing information at this incredible speed, um, it's still really not quite even close to quite as fast as a computer. So the author of your textbook, Mr. Myers, says that your brain is vastly more complex than a computer, but it's not faster at executing simple responses. So the complexity is in the billions of neural, neural, neurons we have in the brain and the way that we network those neurons, but the actual processing speed of some kind of simple task um, isn't better than a computer. By the way, pages 59, 60, and 61 in your textbook do explain this quite well if you're listening to me and you want more visuals or you want more information or you want to really review this. Go for it. So this is a close-up of the synaptic gap, the synapse um, between an axon terminal here and then a dendrite receiving the message. And these are neurotransmitters crossing that synapse. This would be a, a normal person's brain. Um, everything's functioning normally. So we have the action potential. This is what fires this neuron. Um, and this is what's causing the neurotransmitter to cross the gap. And then you see over here, um, some of these neurotransmitters are being sucked up. And then there's a, a couple that are left over and they go back to that um, axon terminal. So some key vocabulary in here you might want to write down um, these spaces are called receptor sites, um, and these are receptor sites on the receiving neuron. These little balls are neurotransmitters, and this, of course, is the axon terminal. Now, normally, these neurotransmitters are being absorbed here at the receptor site. Um, when the neurotransmitters come back to the axon terminal, that is called reuptake. Reuptake. So they're literally sucking back the neurotransmitter, and they try again. I'm going to end here because the bell rang, and I'll continue with different types of neurotransmitters later.